Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Hong Kong and we're going to have a look at another collaboration beer. So both of the breweries involved in this one have featured on the channel many times before. When it comes to the home brewery, I would say that they are pretty solid all round, although in recent years they've really made a name for themselves in the sour beer wild ale category. They've won a lot of awards there, whereas the away brewery again are are solid all round but they've really been struggling a little bit with the business side of things in recent times which has been sad to see because their beers were always pretty damn solid but uh, the beer we're going to have a look at today is a slightly older release from the home brewery but it's a style that I know these guys can do very very well one that I've had from them several times in fact I've reviewed this style quite often since I've been here in Hong Kong which is kind of random when you think about where it actually comes from but uh, this one is something of a special release as well actually and it's supposed to be very very nice not too many bottles of this one left around from what I gather so I was really lucky to get a hold of one of these to review for you here on the channel so um, yeah needless to say I'm very very curious to see what this beer is going to have in store for us Hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, for the home side of things, we are going to head a little bit to the northwest of me here in Kowloon, up to an area called Kwai Chung, and that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from the wonderful Yardley Brothers Brewery. So this particular beer is called Red Beers Reserve. It comes in at 7% ABV and this one is a Flanders Red Ale brewed in collaboration with Carbon Brews from Fotan in the New Territories as well and this one has been aged in uh, rum and Beaujolais barrels actually so that's kind of unusual the um, Beaujolais um, area is a region in I want to say in central France that uh, you know produces lots of grapes obviously wine producing region but these grapes apparently are known for having uh, a thin skin and uh, not having too much in the way of tannins. So I'm quite curious to see how that's reflected in this Flanders Red. And rum barrels, of course, we do know uh, pretty well. And I love my rum barrel aged beers. So um, yeah, I have to say, I think this is the very first time I've had a rum barrel aged uh, Flanders Red. And definitely the first time I've had a Beaujolais uh, barrel aged Flanders Red as well. But yeah, Yardley's very very into their sour beers these days we know they can do the flanders red very well and uh, this carbon bruise beer is from back in the days when chris wong and uh connor hogan were still involved at the brewery and they were producing some really experimental and uh, interesting stuff i think this beer is from 2022 if i'm not mistaken but yeah this should be awesome red beers reserve uh rum and bougelay barrel aged flanders radio from yardley brothers brewery in kwai chung and carbon brews in photon both in the new territories here in hong kong let's crack on with this one then and see what it's going to have in store for us so as always with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about both the breweries involved here before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting though just fast forward all the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Yardley Brothers and from Carbon Brews, and we will no doubt add more to those lists at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that though, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the Hong Kong playlist along with a number of other things. That's been added to quite regularly, of course, since I am based here in Hong Kong. And uh, do make sure you check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well, because there are some very interesting things on the channel these days. But um, yeah, let's go on to my brewery notes then, and I'll tell you a wee bit about the breweries. We'll start off with Yardley Brothers, uh, in this case, since they are the home brewery. So, um, the Yardley Brothers Brewery, as I've told you before, was founded by Luke and Duncan Yardley, and the brothers are half Scottish, half English, and their dad is actually from the next town along from me in Scotland, which is pretty cool. So, um, Luke and I kind of support the same Scottish football team. 
Um, but Luke had previously worked as a parts wholesaler and he ended up staying in Hong Kong after he met a girl but then that relationship didn't work out and he met another one and then married her later and then that of course is Ting Ting who is quite uh, intimately involved with Yardley Brothers Brewery these days. But Luke and Duncan had homebrewed back in the UK and then they took it up again when Duncan joined Luke in Hong Kong in 2014 mainly because they couldn't get the types of beer that they wanted to drink. So the first brewery they had was in a small shack on Lama Island but then in December of 2016 they opened a production brewery on the fifth floor of an industrial building where the rent was significantly cheaper because if you know anything about the real estate in Hong Kong you'll know that the prices are absolutely horrendous but apparently um, when they moved in the tanks wouldn't fit into the lift so they had eight people push them uh, up the stairs they stayed in this brewery though for quite a number of years and this was in the Kwai Chung area at the Wa Tat industrial center which you'll find of course to the northwest of Kowloon um, these days they have two bars, there's the Beer Shack out on Lama Island and they've also got their tap room just called Yardley's on Peel Street in Central, both of which are worth a, vi are worth a visit but um, I quite like going to the Beer Shack, I have to say, it's a little bit more kind of hippie-ish if you like but that's Lama Island for you. But um, over the last few years they've been focusing on developing their barrel programme which started in 2018. They moved into a larger brewery still in Kwai Chung though to the northwest of Kowloon uh, during 2023 and this has allowed them to up their brewing volume quite significantly. So they're producing a number of their core beers and they've also expanded their barrel program as well. Uh, but yeah, over the last few years they've garnered a number of awards, particularly for the sour beers. Yardley's are widely regarded as one of the best, if not the best, uh, sour beer producer in Asia and there's some really really interesting stuff from other breweries out there as well but uh, yeah as of November 2024 when I'm filming this particular review for you these guys have produced 165 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. Um, so yeah that is everything I can really tell you about Yardley Brothers Brewery for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer Beer Advocate and Untapped pages to learn a wee bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so yeah let's go on to Carbon Brews then so, um, Carbon Brews are a little bit newer than Yardley Brothers Brewery. They were founded back in 2018 and the brewery is located in Fotan in the New Territories uh, in the northern part of the Hong Kong Peninsula. But the original brewery was on the first and tenth floor of the Union Industrial Centre in Fotan and uh, this was previously the Hong Kong brewery of Kiyuchi who are from Ibaraki near Tokyo in Japan and they were brewing their Hitachino Nest beer there and they established this facility originally back in 2015. So the original general manager of the brewery was Chris Wong and he's from the US originally but was previously an accountant by trade and he of course also also co-founded HK Brewcraft and Heroes Beer Company while also working for Hitachino Nest's uh, Hong Kong operations. But um, he basically Carbon Brews took over this brewery in late 2018 and it was established as a completely new brand. So the name Carbon is taken from Fo Tan and Tan of course translates into English as Carbon and they quickly built their reputation as a very experimental brewery under the guidance of both Chris and uh, Connor Hogan. They had a tap room in Central on Hong Kong Island which opened in 2022 but closed in 2024 and they have another bar in Akasaka in Tokyo over in Japan. And from what I understand, their brewing operations are going to move over to Japan at some point fairly soon. But in 2023, they took over the Double Haven uh, slash Dragon Water Brewing Facility down the road in the Wawai Industrial Centre. And there they've been operating a 35 hectolitre brew kit. And the current head brewer is Diaz Zhumashev. And he's joined in the brewing team by Justin Chan, Lydia Kuzmina, Harry Liu and Tommy Liu. And as of November 2024, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 140 different kinds of beer, according to Untapped. But um, yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about Carbon Brews for the moment. Like I said earlier, these guys have been struggling in terms of the business side of things. From what I understand, the owner hasn't really managed the company uh, properly, to put it, uh, to, you know, to put it bluntly. Um, he's been very, very bad at actually managing the company. And um, yeah, they've really struggled because of that. And it's a shame because they were doing some really good and some really experimental stuff uh, back in the day. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll uh, see them 
them return to form when they go over to Japan, but we'll just need to wait and see. But yeah, um, as I say, that is everything I can tell you about Carbon Brews for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, again, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Reap Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So yeah, let's go on and actually have a little look at the beer itself. You can see the beer is sweating a little bit because uh, you know we have that wonderful thing in Hong Kong called humidity but yeah you can see the artwork on this one is pretty piratesque which I think is um, is quite funny but yeah you can see uh, Red Beards Reserve there and uh, yeah the other reason I kind of find this funny as well because if you meet Luke Yardley he's a very red-headed man very very nice man <laughs> but yeah Red Beards Reserve I did think that was kind of Funny as well, so yeah. Um, as you can see, rum and Beaujolais barrel aged Flanders Red Ale, seven, I think I told you lies earlier, it's 7.5% rather than 7% ABV. And there you can see uh, the carbon brew symbol here, and then one of the Yardley Brothers symbols. But yeah, um, probably the more recognizable Yardley Brothers one is this. But yeah, this is a 375 milliliter bottle, plain black cap on this one. I actually bought this bottle for I think $125 at the Carbon Brews closing night, actually. So um, yeah, I was quite lucky to get a hold of one of this. They had quite a few of them, but I remember on the menu, this thing was selling for nearly a thousand Hong Kong dollars, actually, and I got it for 125. So I was pretty pleased with that, needless to say. And I told Luke that I actually managed to get a hold of one of these and he was um, quite jealous actually. So um, yeah, it says on the side here, made in collaboration with our good friends at Carbon Brews, this 12, mo 12 month barrel aged Flanders red style sour beer is a blend of rum and a Beaujolais barrels crafted in Hong Kong. So um, yeah, this should be really nice. It's got Britannomyces, Lactobacillus and Pediocus bacteria in it and Saccharomyces as well. So yeah, I think Saccharomyces is just normal yeast if I remember correctly. But yeah, rum and Beaujolais barrel aged, Flanders Red at 7.5% ABV. There are a lot of things to be excited about when it comes to this beer. So let's get it out into the glass and we'll see what it's all about. Nice little bit of smoke on the opening there. And so we'll get this thing out and see what it's all about. This looks really nice. There we go. Only a tiny little bit of sediment left in the bottle there. But that looks absolutely great. So before the head fully disappears, you can see that this one poured with just about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would have said lightly kind of fawn colored head there. The head was actually very similar to the color of the label on the bottle here. So yeah, that was kind of what you're getting. But obviously that has disappeared quite rapidly. But um, yeah, it's just leaving a little kind of foamy, very slight foamy ring around the edge of the glass there. But um, yeah, the color of this one is really, really nice and pretty much in line with what you would expect of a Flanders red. So um, yeah, I would describe this color. If I shine the light through it, it's like a kind of slight, it's like an unstained mahogany color, actually. I think that's a good way to describe it. So remember, the color of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is gonna play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelize and thus you get a darker color of beer. But any barrel aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its color as well. And then in the case of like brown beers or red beers, I guess you could say like the Flanders red style, um, that you know the barrels are gonna play a role in determining the color of the beer. In all honesty, so yeah, the Beaujolais and the um, or Beaujolais, I think I should say rather than Beaujolais, uh, but yeah, the rum uh, as well will play a little role in this one. But color wise, this is definitely um, within the spectrum of what you would expect from a Flanders Radio. Not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one, a few bubbles kind of creeping up to the side of the glass there. And if you watch the surface, you can see. Um, things breaching the surface as well. But yeah, all in all, really nice looking beer. This one pretty much in line with what you would expect from the style. So nothing else we really need to say about that. Let's go on and have a little look at the aroma of this one then. I have to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this is gonna have in store for us. That smells pretty damn nice. I have to say that, that smells really good. I'm a sucker for the more malty 
uh, beer styles, you know, Scotch ales, obviously, which I grew up with, American barley wines, German Doppelbox, Belgian quadruples, and then in the sour beer category, I love Flanders Reds. Really, really do enjoy them. Rodenbach was what really got me into um, into these beers. But this one, this smells awesome, actually. It's... This one, to me, comes across as very brown sugary and very woody, but also very, very smooth when I think about the Flanders Red style category overall. This one is really, really, really nice and smooth. Um, I think this is going to be awesome. Uh, and, you know, Luke, uh, if you meet Luke Yardley, he's a very enthusiastic guy. So if he tell you know, he, um, he just likes tinkering with stuff like ingredients and things like that. He's, you know, you'll get that from him right away as soon as you start talking to him about his beers. And he was particularly excited about this one. So, um, yeah, that tells me this is going to be pretty damn good because we had the In Flanders Fields and we've had another one or two Flanders Reds from them, from them before, if I remember correctly. Um, and they've always been good, but he was particularly um, excited about um, about this one. But yeah, this smells absolutely lovely, and it's giving you all the things that you would expect from this uh, from this style. So the backbone of the beer is obviously the nice oak barrels. Um, so as I've explained many a time before, for me, um, European oak is that little touch drier than American oak. Um, and American oak is a wee bit smoother and gives you a wee touch more vanilla in my mind. So the oak that comes out of the backbone of this beer is really interesting because I think, I'm not sure where the rum is from, but I'm guessing it'll be like um, oak from the Americas somewhere, which gives you that slightly smoother sort of thing. And of course, the European oak and the American oak tree are different species. So, yeah. But yeah, the smooth oaky character um, that comes out of this one is... Um, it's really nice because you get a bit of dryness at the back of the nose, but it's smoother going further forward and you get that wee touch of vanilla there. But you can smell the nice kind of red winey character in the base there too. But you also get a little bit, it almost feels as if that's suppressed a little bit by the kind of sweetness of the rum. So you can smell both sides. You know, I would call it the spirit layer, but obviously wine is not a spirit. So you can smell kind of both sides of things um, going on in this one. But yeah, the aroma of this is um is absolutely lovely um and the barrel side of it too is great above that you start to get the malty side of the beer so yeah you've got a little bit of that kind of fresh brown bready bread crust in there which again is absolutely lovely you can smell that there's some kind of slight um you know, you have got a little bit of a sweet kind of rye, like, I don't know if rye bread is quite the right word, but you've got this sweeter kind of wholemeal brown bread in there. And it's almost got a little bit of a kind of, um, it's almost got a little bit of a kind of cakey type quality to it as well. So it smells like a kind of brandy soaked caramel sponge or something like this. Um, yeah, so brandy soaked caramel sponge coming out of this one which I think is um, is really nice but then above that you start to get the brown uh, you start to get the brown sugars coming out of the beer as well so yeah there's a little bit of a kind of more toasty brown sugar in the base then you've got that Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy uh, sort of thing coming out of it as well um, And yeah, there's a wee bit of like a fudge or caramel or something, and you get a wee bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit too. So these are all things that you'd expect. The other thing that starts to come out of this one is the more leathery character and a wee bit of the nuttiness. So um, yeah, there's some really interesting things going on with the um, with the malty side of this beer, but it smells great. Um, yeah, so the yeasty side of things then at the back of the nose. The yeasty side of this beer for me, it's got a lovely little bit of, um, it's like a kind of sweeter brown bready note that you get out of that and maybe a little bit of that kind of brandy soaked caramel sponge. It's that sort of thing that I'm getting out of this one. So yeah, the malty and yeasty side of this beer. It's nothing unexpected, but it's just really, really nice, I have to say. So in terms of the hoppy side of things with this beer, now, it's always interesting to talk to sour beer brewers about their hopping mentality because what they used to do with the Lambics, uh, the more old school Belgian styles of beer such as the Lambics and this one, the Flanders Red, is that they would add older hops to the beer 
so that they'd lost a little bit of their alpha acid potency and thus the um, the, the bitterness, pardon me, from the hops wouldn't detract from the sour side of the beer. Now, um, a number of modern sour beer breweries, they don't add hops into their sour beers because they say, well, the fruity, um, you know, the fruits that we add in are going to suppress the green component anyway, whereas some brewers will say, oh yeah, no, it gives us a little bit more of a complex flavour, so we will add a little bit of hop into them. So yeah, it's always interesting to talk to the sour beer brewers about what they do in terms of hopping with sour beers. Um, with this one, I think this has had, just going by the aroma, I think this has had a little bit of like German noble hop or something like that in here, a little bit of like Hallertau, Technang, maybe even Czech Zatz, uh, something like that. Um, but of course this beer is about maybe two or three years old at this point that we're drinking it, so a lot of that will have dropped out and probably knowing Luke and how kind of concerned he is about like originality and things, I think he would have followed the old method and used older hops. So you are getting a little bit of green component in the aroma here, like it's very slightly earthy, very kind of slightly woody and you've got a little bit of floral aromaticity and also some kind of um, grassiness in the beer there as well. So um, yeah, the way that that pieces together, I think, is um, is really, really nice. Yeah, you've got that little bit of earthiness, a little bit of woodiness, and a wee bit of grassy and floral character. These are all things that you would expect. On the fruity side of things, yeah, it's kind of what you'd expect. You've got that kind of sharper kind of tanniny note coming out of this one, which is like kind of plums. Yeah, it's kind of like plummy, grapey goes from the the wine in this one so it's like plums grapes there's a little bit of like oily pear in here as well maybe some kind of like black currant actually i'm getting a lot of fig and black currant out of this one the more that i smell of it so uh yeah the way that it goes together i think is uh is really really nice so aroma wise this beer is very very attractive and i'm at the point now where i uh, I want to taste this one. So as I always say, take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of your beers before you get stuck into them, especially if it's something kind of barrel aged like this, um, and it's if, especially if it's a barrel that you don't know. But this one smells great, so big thumbs up to both Yardley Brothers and Carbon Brews for, uh, for this beer. But yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see what it's all about. So yeah, this one is Red Beards Reserve, a 7.5% Flanders Red Ale aged for 12 months in rum and Beaujolais uh, French Red Wine Barrels. It's bottle number 505 of only 1,000. This one comes to you from Yardley Brothers Brewery in Kwai Chung and Carbon Brews in Fo Tan in the new territories here in Hong Kong. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skoll and cheers. That is very, very nice. Yeah, um, first impression, very clean and very smooth, um, Flanders Red, and actually kind of juicy as well, in all honesty. Um, maybe I'm just, you always have to keep in mind that your palate is evolving with every beer that you try. But this one for me is quite, um, it, it just feels that little bit lighter and smoother and things. Maybe it's the, the the wine barrels in this case, and probably the rum barrel is going some way to kind of smoothing it all out. But yeah, this one feels really clean and quite light, and the aftertaste in this is, is um, lovely. Um, yeah, this is a great, uh, great, great, um, Flanders Red, this one, massive thumbs up from me, but you know, when both Yardley's and Carbon are involved in this one, um, and knowing the brewers that were involved in it, Carbon at that time, yeah, this is, yeah, you, you would expect something kind of special here, and this is great. Um, yeah, I kind of wish I'd saved this for like one of the, um, you know, the 5,000th review or something like that, but this is one I'm going to share with Miss Amanda while she's visiting, because she loves the Flanders Red like me, but um, yeah, this is a great, great beer. Um, so if you come across a bottle of this, buy it and try it. But let's do as we always do. We'll break this one down and try it a little and, you know, describe the flavour a little bit more in depth. Let's do that. Ah. 
So, the barrel character on this one is obviously what makes it quite unique. So if you go to the middle third of your palette, you can feel that really nice, kind of smooth, oaky character in there. As I've often said, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palette, more dry and uh, bitter flavours come out further back. So the European oak, I think, is coming out a little bit further back on the palette, whereas the more, I suspect it would be American oak for the rum, is coming out further forward, because you can feel that little touch of vanilla toward the front of that middle third of your palette. Above that, you are getting the uh, spirit layer, and you're also getting the kind of winey layer. So to me, it kind of feels that more of the rum flavor comes out a little bit further forward, but the wine is coming out a wee bit further back, which is kind of interesting. And I was, because I was trying to figure out is the rum in the base and then the wine is on the top of that. Um, so yeah, the, for me, yeah, I think the rum is in the base and then the red wine is, um, is kind of on top of that. I do like, how that um, pieces together in this one. That is really nice. So yeah, for me, the, um, yeah, the fruity side of this beer, I think is, um, is really complemented by that winey character from the barrel you can feel the grapes are quite juicy and they just have a little bit of the they have as i was saying earlier they only have just a little touch of that kind of leathery character so yeah you've got your i think the rum layer sits above the oak then the red wine layer kind of sits on top of that and then you start to get the more malty side of the beer so above that you can feel this kind of like fresh kind of brown bready bread crust in there and above that you've got a more dense and slightly sweet wholemeal brown bread and the next layer up from that is a sort of um yeah it's a sort of kind of like caramel sponge or something like that like i was picking up in the aroma you've got this kind of caramel sponge cakey sort of layer and then you start to get the brown sugary side of the beer so it's a little touch kind of um toasty I would say. So you've got that nice little bit of toasty brown sugar in there and then you've got a nice kind of circle which sits in the middle of your palate. So the base of that circle is the more kind of leathery brown sugar and then above that you've got a bit of a like a Werther's original butter candy butterscotchy sort of flavour and in the dead centre of your palate you have this sweet kind of caramelly fudgy sort of note and maybe just sitting above all of that there's a little touch of a, a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit coming out of the beer and you start to get some more nutty uh, flavours out of the beer into the aftertaste as well which is really interesting. So yeah, I have to say that is pretty nice with this beer. Um, yeah, on the, um, yeah, I think that's everything we really need to see about the middle third of the palette. So let's go to the back third of the palette. As I've often said, the back third of the palette is going to give you very similar flavours to the middle third of your palette, just that different intensities. So yeah, the border region between middle and back third of your palette, you get that nice little bit of kind of bready build up in there. So you've got the brown bread in the base, uh, the kind of caramelly spongy character sitting above that, and a wee bit of the toasty brown sugar at the top. But then yeah, the base of that... Um, the base of that back third of your palate, you've got a nice, um, yeah, you do have a little bit of that, um, yeah, you can feel the drier side of the oaky wood in there, and I think you're getting a bit more of the kind of tanniny side of the wine in this case as well, and then yeah, you get the, the fresh brown bready bread crust in there, you get a layer of kind of Sweet, like sweet but still kind of dry wholemeal brown bread. You can feel that layer is a little bit lighter, taller and more airy. You get the sort of caramelly sponge cakey kind of thing above that that I was talking about as well. And then you can feel some of the leathery and toasty aspects of the brown sugar just uh, creeping over the top of that, which again I think is very, very nice. Mm. So yeah. The way that all of that pieces together in this beer 
it's pretty damn nice, I have to say. So, um, yeah, on top of all of that, you start to get the yeasty side of things. So for me, the yeasty side of this beer, it's got, um, you can feel at its core, it's got this lovely kind of sweet, wholemeal, brown bready character to it, which I do like. And then around the edge, um, you've got the whole, like a kind of sweeter wholemeal brown bread in the middle. Then you can feel a more grainy brown bready character around that and then just a little touch of bread crust around the very edge. So the yeasty side of this one most definitely is leaning toward that kind of brown bready side of things. And definitely, yeah, the back third of your palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue, it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more. So yeah, the way that this one goes together, I think, is really, really nice. Um, yeah. I think that's everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of things for this beer. Let's go on to the hoppy and fruity side of it then to round off the tasting section. So yeah, the sides of your palate are very smooth in this one, I have to say. But you are still getting little elements of green component flavour in there. So you can feel the back corners of the palate, you've got that nice little bit of, um, of earthy character there. As you move further forward, it's a slight, slight touch woody. I would say, and then as you push further forward beyond that, you've got that nice kind of floral aromat, a little touch of floral aromaticity, and a wee bit of grassiness around the kind of front edge of your tongue there. As I said though, all of that is very, very smooth because the hoppy character has kind of dropped out. So yeah, um, in terms of the, um, yeah, in terms of the front third of your palate then and the fruity side of things. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get that nice little bit of kind of bready build up in there. You've got the brown bread, the sort of caramelly sponge and a wee bit of the brown sugar on the top and then the base of that front third of your palate is a little bit more along the lines of, um, yeah, it's a little bit more along the lines of, uh, I would say, how, yeah, I would say it's a little bit more along the lines of a uh, um, kind of, it's, yeah, it's got a really, it's the really smoother side of the oak that comes out there and a lot of the vanilla, so the rummy oak. So yeah, you can feel a little bit more of the rum in the base of that front third of your palate. But then yeah, the brown bread, the, the bread crust, the brown bread, and then the smoother caramelly sponge and a wee bit of the more leathery and toasty brown sugar as well. Then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way um, out of the beer with this one. So yeah, for me, the um, fruity side of this beer, um, yeah, it's quite, you know, you can feel the, the sort of red winey side of things in that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, but yeah, as you move further forward from that, it has a little bit of a kind of datey type quality to it. There's certainly some oily pears in there. Um, Sultana as well. What else would I say? Yeah, it's yeah, there's you get kind of dates, sultanas, maybe a tiny little bit of like fig and black currant and things like that as well. And yeah. It all goes together really nicely. That this the the impact flavour, when it comes to sour beers, you should always talk about impact flavour. And for me, a good sour beer is one that gives you a little bit of kind of bite in the beginning and then mellows out really nicely. And this beer absolutely does that. This is great. Um this one, um you get that little bit of impact flavour behind at the back of the front, um at the back of the front third of your tongue and then yet yeah, all the other stuff just kind of lingers and comes out a wee bit further forward than that um but yeah all in all the way this one goes together i think is uh, is really really nice and it's it's a great great beer this one i think if you like the flanders red style you will enjoy this one this is a slightly more woody and smooth example of this style i would say than some of the other ones it's not quite um I think the barrel really comes in, the aftertaste, the barrel really comes out and you get a lot of the vanilla and a lot of the kind of rummy side of things and just a wee bit of the winey character at the back of the palate too. So a lot of the red fruity flavours you get in this one are the kind of grapey notes 
that you would expect from the um, there are the kind of grapey notes you would expect from the wine barrel in this case. So yeah, really interesting beer that has got me thinking, and that's what you want after 4,200 odd beer reviews. So um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for the flavour side of this one. So in terms of the mouthfeel, as I said earlier, for me, this beer is really, really clean. Um, it does have a wee bit of that kind of oily, smooth, slick kind of character that you'd expect in the style. I would describe this one as being kind of, in the sour beer category, I would describe this one as being kind of top end of mid-body, bottom end of full body, but the carbonation is very smooth, it has an almost silky character to it, but like I say, very oily and slick and clean. Your IBU in this beer is going to be pretty low, I would think, probably about 10 IBUs at the absolute most, and it's really smooth. The backbone of the beer, the smooth oaky kind of character in there, the nice kind of smoother and slightly drier malty notes, and then yeah, you've got the leathery kind of brown sugary characters just uh, sitting on top of that and giving you some sweetness into the aftertaste and yeah the fruity side of this one is uh, kind of nice and oily as well but um yeah overall <clears throat> i think this one is an awesome awesome beer and potentially my favorite flanders red that i've had from uh, yardley brothers so far so yeah i think we can um, leave it at that for this one this was the red beards reserve a 7.5 percent beaujolais and Rum Bard Lace Flanders Radio from Yardley Brothers Brewery and in collaboration with Carbon Brews, both from the new territories here in Hong Kong. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from both Yardley Brothers and Carbon Brews as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the very near future. But until then, Slanja, Skull, cheers, check out my social media, check out Yardley's and Carbon Brew's social media, and I'll catch you guys in the next review. And do give me some uh, red, uh, Flanders Red recommendations, because I'm very interested in this style. Slanja, Skull, cheers, and catch you guys later. Ciao just now.